13 species of ash trees. The wood structure of black ash makes it a great choice for weaving, as it is pliable. This tree can grow well in cold and wet locations. Wildlife will come to visit this tree since birds and animals eat the seeds. Deer and moose also like to chew on the branches and leaves. The thick gray bark becomes fissured and scaly as the tree ages. This species of ash has 7 to 11 leaflets per compound leaf group, and the foliage turns yellow in the fall. The green ash is one of the most common ashes found in the landscape and is another of the species that have been severely impacted by emerald ash borer. It can grow in a wide variety of soil conditions and is especially forgiving of conditions like pollution and salt in urban areas. Other common names include red ash, swamp ash, and water ash. The gray-brown bark forms a diamond-like pattern. The medium green leaves include 5 to 9 leaflets, turning variable shades of yellow in the fall. Green ash is traditionally planted as a shade tree or shade tree, but it is not recommended in areas where the insect is expected to arrive. The name pumpkin ash comes from the fact that the base of the trunk becomes engorged and can look like a pumpkin, especially in wet soils. The other common names are swelled bud ash and red ash. This is a thick-bodied tree with a trunk covered in thick, gray, fissured bark. The leaves comprise clusters of seven to nine leaflets that turn bronze to purplish red in fall. This tree likes moist soil, making it a traditional choice for large rain gardens. It is a very large tree that needs a lot of space. However, it is one of the ash species that has been most devastated by emerald ash borer, and experts now advise against planting it. The velvet ash is drought tolerant and does well in wet or alkaline soils, also. It is one possible choice if you need a tree that grows fast. This tree is also known as the Arizona ash and Modesto ash. The gray-brown bark is rough and fissured, and the shoots emerge with a velvety coating. Emerald ash borer has recently become more of an issue for this ash so planting is not advised in some areas. White ash is another of the more common ash trees in the US, a fact that assures that it, too, has been catastrophically affected by emerald ash borer. Also known as Biltmore ash, this is the largest of the native ash trees, a pyramidal tree that gradually develops a fully rounded crown as the tree ages. The bark is gray in color and develops a distinctive pattern of diamond-shaped ridges in older trees. The leaves are clusters of 5 to 9 leaflets that are dark green on top, whitish green on the undersides. Fall color is a purplish yellow. This species, too, is susceptible to death from emerald ash borer. The name blue ash comes from the fact that the inner bark turns blue in the air and was used to make dye. A distinctive characteristic of this species is the square shape of young shoots. In mature trees, the gray bark forms irregular plates. The leaves form clusters of 7 to 11 leaflets, turning gray and dull yellow in the fall. This is regarded as one of the best ashes for dry locations, though it also does well in medium wet sites. The California ash, also known as two-petal ash, is a shrub or small tree that is quite different in appearance to many other ashes. The leaves have serrated edges and rounded tips, form in clusters of three to nine leaflets. The white flowers have two petals and hang in fragrant clusters. This is a very good plant for drought since it has very low water needs. As the name suggests, the European ash can be found throughout Europe. It is also known as the common ash. Unlike most ashes, this tree is generally wider than it is tall when mature. Look for black buds as a characteristic to distinguish them from other ashes, which usually have brown buds. The leaves of European ash comprise 7 to 13 leaflets. While some cultivars have a yellow color in the fall, the native species tend to drop their leaves while they are still green. Greg's ash is a large shrub that can be trained into a small tree. It can be drought tolerant once established and can be used as a container specimen. This species has smaller leaves than other ash tree species, forming clusters of 3 to 11 leaflets. The bark is smooth and gray, and the branches are quite thin. Other common names include little leaf ash, Mexican ash, and dogleg ash. This is one of the few ashes that tolerate some shade. Emerald ash borer has not yet affected this tree in its native range but could do so in the future. 
Manna ash is named after the food described in the Bible because of its sweet sap extract. The sugar alcohol mannitol and the sugar mannose can be taken from this sap. This has one of the prettiest flower shows of the ashes, appearing in May, its other common name is flowering ash. The dark gray bark on this tree remains smooth, even in old trees. The leaves form in bundles of five to nine leaflets, with finely serrated edges, turning yellow-purple in fall. The narrow leaf ash is a medium to large-sized tree renowned for doing well in urban settings and in acidic soil. Also known as desert ash and narrow-leaved ash, this tree has smooth, pale gray bark on young trees that gradually become square cracked and knobby as the tree grows older. The leaves are quite slender and grouped in 3 to 13 leaflets. The most common cultivar, raywood, is also known as claret ash, named for the lovely shade of purple that occurs in fall. This tree is quite similar to the related Fraxinus excelsior, but on the narrow leaf ash, the buds are pale brown rather than black. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more interesting videos. And please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm.